Hi everyone, it's Webby and welcome back to another video. Today's car is the 2021 Land Rover Defender. It's something that I've been sort of keen to get my hands on for quite a while now. Probably like you, I've watched lots of videos, I've read a load of reviews about this car. And a bit like the GR Yaris, there's been a lot of hype about this car. I think because the previous Defender had such a big following, um, it's a bit of a cult car, uh, people absolutely loved it. Uh, so Land Rover had quite a job on their hands when they decided to sort of bring out this modern version of it. But thankfully, I think they've done it justice, as you'll see from this review. Uh, I've just got to start off by saying a big thank you to Berwick Jaguar Land Rover uh, for lending me this car for the weekend. Uh, this is the D300 SE, so it's got the 3 litre diesel engine in it, uh, which will come to a little bit more later in the video uh, and tell you some specs about the car itself. Um, so without further ado, let's have a look around this new 2021 Defender. So there's actually five engine options for the new Defender. You've got two diesel and then three petrol. The one we've got here is the higher powered diesel. This has got 220 kilowatt and 650 newton meters of torque. The three engine options are a two litre, a three litre, and then a five litre V8. This to me kind of hits a bit of a sweet spot because most people that go off-roading are going to want to use a diesel engine because there's so much torque but then you still get fairly decent economy as well and even though the car weighs sort of 2.3 tonne it's got enough power to actually get you out in most situations um, but also be a good cruiser on the freeway as well so looking at the styling of this new defender you can still see some cues from the old model like these sort of textured bits here on the top of the bonnet i'm not sure if you're meant to stand on those or what they're really there for but it looks like it could stand in them, I reckon. Anyway, styling around the front. I have to say, I think this is a really good looking car. I love the sort of the chunky front end. Um, I like these really nice sort of daytime running lamps. It's just got such an aggressive sort of stance to it. It really looks really purposeful. But at the same time, it's kind of got that handsome sort of chiseled look to it. I don't know if that makes sense, but if you see one in person, you'll kind of know what I mean. Um, I like the fact that it's got all sort of plastic around the wheel arches as well. It's got that sort of proper off-road look. Um, because at the end of the day, this is an off-road car. Um, it does a fantastic job of being an on-road car. But obviously, Defenders have always been known as the best off-road car you can buy. Um, but yeah, nowadays, it's been brought right up to date. It's, it's a do-everything car, um, as you'll see as we go around the car and go for a drive a bit later. The side profile of the Defender is very chunky and square as well. Uh, which again harks back to the original. It's got a very sort of boxy rear end, very sort of square. But as you come down the side, it looks sort of very chunky and solid. Um, you know, these sort of big chunky door handles just make you feel like a really tough car and then you can throw anything at it. I love things like this sort of air vent down the side of here with Defender on the side, the big gloss black door mirrors. Uh, you've got the roof rails. This section here, you can actually have a ladder in case you want to sort of get up on the roof to your tent that you can stick on top of the roof. It is just a real good modern interpretation of the old Defender. Um, and I think they've done such a fantastic job with it. I actually happen to really like it in this color as well. Um, it's just one of those, it, it looks like a, a Land Rover color. You know, it looks like you're about to go you know, off-roading and like you can see, it's already pretty dirty. So it just suits the car really, really well. So as I said a minute ago, the, the back of the car is very sort of vertical and sort of boxy. Um, but that's a good thing because you kind of know how long the car is when you're sort of trying to park it. Um, it's not one of these where you've got like a sloping rear um, sort of screen and it's sort of making it difficult to park. Obviously you've got the spare wheel on the back, um, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because it just gives you that sort of proper Defender look. Um, the rear door, however, though, does open like that, rather than sort of lifting up like a normal hatchback on a wagon, opens to the side, um, which again is very traditional, but if you're in a tight parking space or if someone parks behind you, it could cause a bit of an issue of actually trying to get into your boot if you wanted to. Um, but I do like things like these LED tail lights in the back um, with built-in reverse lights. Um, it's quite a sort of cool feature, and when you see them at night, they're really bright. Boot space, as you'd expect, is really good. Um, you've got just over a thousand litres uh, with the rear seats up in place. But when you fold the seats down, you've got nearly 2,400 litres of carrying capacity, which is really impressive. Being that this is the SE model, it comes with adaptive air suspension. 
There's a couple of buttons inside the boot so you can raise and lower the suspension to make it easier to get things in and out of the boot. So you just literally press the button and the suspension can either go down or you can press it and it goes really high. That's a neat little feature to have. So if you've got something really heavy to go in the boot, it makes the job so much easier. So coming into the front of the Defender, and it feels just like a really upmarket, typical Land Rover, to be honest. Um, all your material is a really nice quality, um, leather steering wheel. On top of the dash, you've got this bar that runs all the way across the top. Um, it feels like it's kind of covered in neoprene or something similar to that. Um, it feels quite soft and sort of premium, but it doesn't look like it will mark too much, which is always good. The nice thing I like about it all is there's not too many buttons everywhere. Um, you've got things like your air conditioning, bits and pieces here. You can adjust your air suspension, but there's not heaps and heaps of buttons everywhere, which is a really good thing because obviously there's a lot of technology on board this car. A lot of it is actually taken care of by the buttons on the sat-nav system. The seats are really comfortable uh, without being sort of too restrictive. The steering wheel feels absolutely huge. Um, I don't know whether that's because they want it to, uh, to feel like an off-road utility vehicle. Um, but yeah, it almost feels like uh, you're driving a, something much bigger. But the steering itself is really sort of direct uh, and accurate. You sort of, when you're steering, you know exactly what the car's doing. It doesn't feel light and um, unconnected. So as I said, all the controls are taken care of on this main screen, but then you've also got a digital display in front of you as the instrument cluster. The standard specification on this SE model is really, really good, but we have got a few options on this particular car, starting with the tow bar, and also electrically operated seats with memory positions and also seat heating as well. We've also got these gloss black roof rails. Metallic paint is obviously an option, but I think this Iger grey colour really suits the Land Rover Defender. And in that family pack, you get things like climate control in the second row as well as the front, plus also air controls in the back of the car as well. As well as having the controls for the air conditioning in the back, we've also got plenty of power points here as well. We've got two cigarette lighter type uh, 12 volt power sockets, uh, along with two USB-C fast charge connectors as well. So anybody sitting in the back is really well catered for in terms of connections. We've got ample leg room, you can stretch out your legs, so it makes for a nice relaxing journey. Heaps of headroom obviously, you can even wear a hat in here um, and still have plenty of space. We've even got connectors on the back of the seats as well. So you've got another option of plugging an iPad or a phone into charge whilst you're driving. Um, so you're never going to run out of places to charge your phones or your iPads. If I was buying a Defender, I'd definitely have it with a sunroof, um, just to let a bit more light into the car. Although this lighter coloured headlining does make it feel sort of quite light and airy inside, so that's actually not too bad. You get an armrest in the middle of, as well for the rear passengers and also a couple of cup holders. Um, and the outer two seats have got ISOFIX child seat fixings as well. And lastly, we've got the two rear seats in the very back. We've got the air conditioning controls, we've got the air vents, we've got cup holders, 12 volt power socket. So the people in the third row are really well looked after. Something nice for the rear seat passengers is having these windows just above, which are standard. Um, and again, that harks back to the original Defender. So anybody sitting in the, the second and third row get this nice bit of light coming in so it's not too claustrophobic. So now I've given you a bit of a tour of the new Defender. I think we'll be able to take it out on the road and actually see what it's like um, on road, plus also try and find a bit of unmade road, um, something where we can show off a bit of the four-wheel drive system as well because that's what this car is really all about. One of the first things you notice when you start driving this new Defender is just how easy it is the steering is nice and light but direct, the seats are comfortable and the visibility is really good. 
the ride comfort is exceptional, obviously with the help of the air suspension. But it's just it's just such an easy car to drive. I mean it's not the smallest car in the world, but again it's not the biggest. But it's just it's just easy. There's been lots of hype about this car um, in the media. And sometimes you wonder whether it's just a bit kind of overdone. You know, if they're all just drinking the Kool-Aid when they go on a media test drive or something. But when you actually get behind the wheel and you kind of it kind of gets under your skin a bit. It's, it's kind of understanding why people are raving about this car quite so much. Um, I've never actually driven any type of Land Rover before uh, in all the years I've been in car sales, which is quite amazing really. But for this to be my first experience, I have to say it's a really good one. Um, yeah, it, it just feels a nice, nice car to drive. Um, even if you ignore the, the four-wheel drive stuff that it can do. It would make a great family car. Um, I'm sure you're going to see plenty of these uh, dropping the kids off to school somewhere. Some. But it, it doesn't feel sort of cumbersome to drive. It still feels sort of fairly nimble for such a big car, uh, which is quite a quite a, an achievement from Land Rover. Normally, you, you know, when you drive a car, you've spent a little bit of time with the car. You soon sort of start to think of things you don't like about it. Um, you know, little things that might get on your nerves or you know, just be irritating. But I genuinely haven't found anything that I dislike about this car yet. Um, and that's quite remarkable, really, because normally there's something you don't like about a car. I don't even think it's that badly priced. This particular one is $120,000 drive away. Um, and that's with all the options and the factory options that I spoke about earlier on the car. But that also includes a five year prepaid service plan as well. So for the next five years, you haven't got to worry about your servicing costs. Um, which when you sort of think of a premium or prestige car, the servicing costs or the, uh, how much it's gonna actually, you know, how high they're gonna be is normally something that, um, yeah, I guess is probably one of the first questions you'd ask when you're looking to buy something like this. Because of the really good visibility, it makes you sort of chill out a bit when you're driving, you're kind of just cruising along, taking in the scenery, enjoying the drive. Um, which I think is something that all sort of SUVs or 4x4s do just because you've got a bit more time to you know, see the traffic in front of you, what's going on and it's not sort of like a, a hot hatchback where you're sort of tear arsing around everywhere you're actually sort of taking your time and just enjoying the journey plus also the fact big cars like this don't go in corners like a, a hot hatchback does I do like this uh, V6 diesel engine it's nice and smooth, it's pretty quiet for a diesel. Uh, it's got plenty of power and torque. It's, um, yeah, it's a nice car to drive. I like the simplicity of the interior as well. It feels functional, but it feels upmarket and premium without having millions of buttons everywhere to distract you when you're driving. And it makes you feel like you're in something special as well. Quite often when I'm uh, reviewing or driving a car, you feel like you sort of you want to be in the top model because you want all the gadgets and the features, just so you can play with them or enjoy them or what have you. But this particular car, I don't know, this model with a couple of extras that it's got on it, it's like, apart from the sunroof that I mentioned earlier, I don't think I'd want to put too much more on it, to be honest. I like the kind of, not the very basic nature of it, but I, find, I like the fact that it's kind of not overdone. It still kind of like feels a little bit utilitarian, like a Defender it always has been. In terms of competition for this car, you've obviously got to look at things like the Germans, so Mercedes, Audi, BMW. But there's only a couple of models, like say the G-Wagon, which are really going to sort of get close to this in terms of off-road ability but you could also compare it to 
something like a Toyota Land Cruiser Prado uh, or something like that or even a, a 200 series purely because of its off-road ability. If you compared this $120,000 model to something like the Prado or the 200 series Land Cruiser you're going to find yourself something that would sort of fit the bill. But I'd argue that this feels a little bit more premium and nicer inside. Um, it's definitely got a sort of Germanic feel about it in terms of the way it's put together and the materials. And it feels a bit more nimble and better handling as well. Whereas both the Toyotas feel a little bit sort of wallowy around the game and corners uh, and things like that. So heading out to a bit of unmade road. Wasn't quite the 4x4 track I was looking for, but considering the weather conditions and the day that I was filming, I think this was probably the wisest move to make uh, and just find a bit of unsealed road. Um, so it's not tarmac on the surface, it's literally just loose stones, dirt, bit of rubble here and there. Uh, but with all the rain that we'd had, it made sort of uh, you know, fairly challenging driving conditions, uh, as you can probably see. Go around the corners, you had to slow down a bit. It was pretty treacherous out there. And there was a fair bit of standing water around. And um, yeah, the, the weather certainly didn't help make things easy for me and there were patches of the road where you know it sort of thinned out there was a bit of tarmac here and there but there was still a fair bit of sort of dirt and rubble on the road uh, which didn't really help uh, as you can see as i say fair bit of standing water around and so you've got the trees you got leaves and bits and pieces as well uh, just as we see this car coming past there's a fair bit of standing water as well uh, but thankfully it thinned out and um, we had a bit more sort of standard roads, which was quite nice. A bit further on, I found this place called Mill Valley Ranch, which turns out to be like a kid's sort of camp, I suppose, uh, in the theme of like an old western town. So I thought it'd be quite a cool place to stop and take some pictures of the car. So um, yeah, jumped out, got a couple of snaps. So that's the video of the Land Rover Defender. Um, really impressed. I liked it. Um, I'd only read and reviews and watched videos of it before. I've never really been up close to one. Um, so it's always good to actually get and drive it for yourself and form your own opinion. Um, and everything I've read and, and watched, um, yeah, everyone's right. It's such a good car. Um, a lot of people will sort of say, oh, it's not a real Defender because it's it's got too many modern gadgets and you know, a, a Defender should just be really, really basic. But what you've got to remember in modern times, you need all the safety features because people aren't going to buy it otherwise, um, because that's what people want in a car nowadays. Um, so it's, it's got all the modern stuff, but it still does the off-road stuff really, really well. Um, and it just feels a nice place to be as well. You can do long journeys in it. It can be a proper family car um, when you need it to be. Um, so I've really enjoyed it. I've really liked it. Um, so yeah, big thanks to Beric Jaguar Land Rover again uh, for lending me the car for the weekend. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, uh, obviously give it a like. Uh, it does help with the YouTube algorithms. Helps other people find the video. Um, so I'd obviously be much appreciated if you could do that. Um, subscribe to the channel as well. Hit the notification bell. Uh, because then you'll always be notified when more, when more car reviews come out. I've got a lot of stuff coming. Uh, in the next couple of months. Uh, got some good sort of um, brand deals with different manufacturers um, sort of coming through, which will be good. Uh, some different stuff coming there. Uh, but yeah, hope you've enjoyed it and um, stay tuned for the next one.